Hi everyone, come on in. This is my weekly viral wisdom. Hi everyone, it's um, viral wisdom number 70. I've done 70 of them until now. I'm so happy to be here. Um, tell me where you're signing in from, how you are. So this is um, <clears throat> a divided time in American history, I think. I don't, I don't feel like it's necessary. It's necessarily a time where one side has won over the other. Um, I think that it's a moment of somber reflection and, and a true reconciling of who it is we are as, as humans. Who are we, you know? And people are thinking about this as this side or that side. And instead of that, because that just creates um, duality, I prefer to think of it as where we are on the continuum of consciousness and where we are, where, what issues matter to us, what stands the strongest for us. And it's not us against them or me versus you, because even if we think that we, one side has won, it doesn't matter because tomorrow there will be another version of the same thing. Because what we're seeing here is a, an expression of the multifaceted levels of consciousness. What we're seeing here is the, the pantheon of ways that we express consciousness. So the question to ask is not which side you're on. The question to, the, to ask is not, are you a Republican or a Democrat or whatever the different parties are in different countries? That's not the question. The question is, what are the things I stand for, right? What matters the most to me? Does my tax break matter the most to me? Does my bank account matter the most to me? Does my family matter the most to me? Or does it matter equally, if not more, how other families fare, how other people fare, how the earth fares? What matters to me as a human? And I think this is a chance for us to look in the mirror and not point the finger at where someone else is not at or where someone else is at, but instead point the finger at ourselves. Where am I at? How do I live my life? What, what values do I uphold? How do I express myself? How do I take care of myself on a daily basis and, and those around me? What words come out of my mouth? What ideals do I express? How do I stand up for what I believe in? And how do I back that up by action? How do I show that I'm not a racist? You know, it's easy to say I'm not a racist. It's really easy to say I'm not a racist. I, I love all people of all color, really. How do I show it in my personal life? What actions do I take? How do I advocate? How do I harness my power and my energy and my words and my resources, my resources to show that I am not a racist? It's one thing to say it, but how do I show it? If I care about women rising, how do I express that in my circle of women? Do I help women rise? Do I create a nurturing environment where I am not competitive and I, and I help them to, to stand on my shoulders? So this is not a time to think about me versus you. This is not a time to, to determine which party. Shirley writes on Instagram, you lost so many followers. Why did you do that? Big mistake. <laughs> it's not a mistake. The, the quantity doesn't matter. It's the alignment of values. It's really good, but I did lose a lot. Yesterday, yesterday when I posted Biden and Harris, I posted a picture of their victory and talked about this 
momentous time. I lost 2,000 followers within an hour. I mean, it was, it was astounding. But it's not a mistake. I don't, I don't regret doing that because each one of us has freedom of expression. Each one of us has a right to talk about where they stand. And everyone should know where we stand so we know. It's, one, it's a wonderful thing. It's not, it's not a mistake. You know, I, I, although my ego is like, what the hell? <laughs> like that happened really fast. Um, this is a this is a clearing. This is an opportunity to to part the waters, not in a divisive way. This is for us to know where we stand on the continuum of consciousness. Whatever your continuum is, I know what mine is, and I know where I stand, and I know where I want to expand. I know how much more work I have left. I'm not this ideal picture perfect Zen Buddhist monk, you know, living in, a, in the caves. I have a huge ego. I have huge fears and insecurities. And each one of you do too. I point the finger while I point it back at me. So this is a moment for us to see how we have fallen as humans, how we have created division to look at our own lives and go, how do I create separation in my own life? How do I create division in my own life? How am I weak and insecure and fear-based in my own life? This is a moment. This is not for us who won to put our hand on our hip at the, those who lost. I mean, you can do some of that. There's always going to be some of that. But after that, now what? It's not about going they, 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 they. No, that's how we got here in the first place, by pointing the finger. Now it's, oh, we have to rise up. We have to band together. We have to unify. We have to, we have to speak. And maybe through our expression of our radiance and our joy and our sense, we will bring more people on the continuum of consciousness. People are always moving on this continuum of consciousness. You know, when I think of it as a continuum of consciousness, I calm the F down. When I think of it as me versus you, that party versus this party, I, I'm all anxious. So I adopt ways to think that calm me down. I'm sharing that with you. Maybe you use the same way to think about it. The way I think about it is on a continuum of consciousness. And we're always moving on this continuum of consciousness. It's never steady. And there's always momentum. This gives me a feeling of optimism. I know that at any point I could fall if I'm not careful and disciplined. And at any point, someone could come toward this side. And that's what we're doing. That's what I feel my work is, your work is, is to make, have the needle move, right? Along this continuum of consciousness. Don't assume perfection because the continuum goes into infinity. No one has reached the peak of the continuum. It's, it's a constantly moving spectrum with its arrow pointing to infinity. That's when you reach the unified consciousness. That's when you reach non-duality. That takes a lot. I am not there by far, but I know where the arrow is pointing. The arrow of the continuum of consciousness can only point to one direction. It can only point toward non-duality non-separation, unification, that I'm clear. And that each one of us needs to be clear. The arrow is only pointing toward unification, but in order for us to embody unification, we need to dissolve polarity in one place only, the polarity in our mind. The reason we are not moving towards unified consciousness is because we're stuck. We're stuck at me versus you. Do you believe in the same God that I do? Are you of the same status as I am? Do you have the same values that I have? And we're constantly causing separation. I have already owned that I have been part of this. I am a human on the continuum of consciousness. But only when we own our shadow, only when we dare to look in the mirror and say, you know what, maybe I am racist. Maybe I'm a bigot. Maybe I'm full of stereotypes. Maybe I'm conditioned. Own our shadow. If we don't own the fear, the insecurity, the disempowerment, the shadow, how are we going to transcend the shadow? So this is not about 
those who won feeling righteous. And this is not about those who lost feeling like they lost and that they've defeated. This is not us against them. We're all sinking. If, we, if one group sinks, we all sink because they take us down. So now if one rises, we all must rise. We must take the others with us as much as they want to come. But we need to stop looking at it as me versus you, but see it. How far are we away from the end goal? And the end goal is unified consciousness. The end goal is that there's only one destination, which is one humanity. You know, I posted that Kamala Harris is the first woman of color after, I don't know, 48 or 49 vice presidents. So people immediately wrote back to me and said, why are you looking at color and gender? And with all humility, please understand, we have to look at color and gender because color and gender have been tilted only to one color and one gender till now. And if the end goal is unified consciousness, that means all colors and all genders need to be in that pool. So it's easy for those who are privileged to say, why look at color and gender? <laughs> it's easy. But when you have been constantly oppressed and kept out of the, the race, kept out of the winning, kept out of the, even the, the, the slightest foundation of the establishment, the bottom of the, the, the floor, the gutter, you've even been kept out of the gutter. Then it's time to rise all those who haven't had the opportunity to rise. I mean, it's as clear as day. If the goal is unified consciousness, we have to ask who isn't part of this unified consciousness and whoever isn't part have to come along. It's not white and male anymore. And pantheons of us, legions of us have been downtrodden and oppressed and ignored. And it is time for anyone who has a voice, anyone who has a platform, anyone who has a consciousness of unity to now raise the other. And we can only do it when we stop being antagonistic. So in one of my groups, I've invited a woman who is from the other side and we're gonna have a dialogue and maybe we'll post it on Facebook so that we can begin to understand what about your side scares me and what about my side scares you. We cannot look at it anymore as you and versus me. We have to look at it as we're all heading on the same consciousness continuum, but we are different places. And it's just a matter of all of us one day feeling secure enough, empowered enough, and filled with love enough that we will all be heading towards unity. We're not there yet, we're all across the continuum, but that's how we need to look at it rather than it's me versus you. So the first place to begin the work is in our own mirror. We have to begin the work in our own mirror. And we have to look at our own shadow. The work cannot begin if we are filled with hatred. I know that about myself. And that's why I didn't do viral wisdom last Sunday. I couldn't do viral wisdom last Sunday because I was filled with ego, 100%. I had to cancel it. You know, in, in the meditation that I do, at the end of the meditation, it's called Metta Bhavna, is loving kindness, where you have loving thoughts and loving energy. But the teacher says, don't fake it. If you're not in loving, kind energy, don't fake it. You know, he kind of, teach the, the voice, I don't even know whether what gender, but the voice says, don't fake it. Don't pretend to, don't force loving, kind energy till you work through what is blocking you, right? Rumi said, our greatest obstruction to love has nothing to do with us finding a person on the outside, but all to do with our mental barriers. In the same way, I was filled with ego last Sunday and I didn't do viral wisdom. I was like, I, I can't do it because I am not in the space to talk beauty, to talk transcendence. I'm not feeling it. I was filled with my ego and that's okay. I'm on the continuum. I'm not at the end of perfection. Nobody is at the end of perfection. And that is the first admission toward healing. The first admission is to recognize our own ego. Where am I blocked? Who do I not like? Where do I judge? Why am I not able to see what the other side is communicating? Where are my blockages? Where am I creating an, a, a, a different reality? Where am I deluded? Am I thinking about my bottom dollar? 
Am I thinking about only my family, my race, my color, my gender? Or am I having an inclusive, unified consciousness? The end goal is unified consciousness, people, if you want it to be. And that means each one of us needs to look in the mirror and say, how am I an advocate for unified consciousness? Am I thinking about the downtrodden right now? Am I thinking about the person who is the most oppressed right now? And in this country right now, the most forgotten are our black brothers and sisters. So am I thinking about them? Or am I thinking, oh, you know, it doesn't, that's not my problem. Am I thinking about who this country was built on? Am I thinking about who this country consistently forgets? Our children, our women, and our black brothers and sisters and people of color and our indigenous people. Who are we forgetting? See, that's how you have a unified consciousness. It's easy to say I'm not racist. It's easy to say I'm full of beauty and healing. Really? The, the next thing you need to think of if you think like that is really what am I doing on a daily basis to advocate for those who are not seen by all, who are not in the majority? When I live my life every day with the intention to turn the spotlight on those who are not in the majority, then I am moving towards unified consciousness. Otherwise, I'm all talk. So it's not about this side or that side. It is not about your bank balance or my bank balance. It is about how I advocate for those who are not in the majority. If that is not our unified goal, then we are not working towards a unified consciousness. If we don't wake up and go enough, just because of a person's skin color, just because of where they're born, that determines their opportunity. It cannot be in the world I live in. When you feel that within your skin, it doesn't matter what they believe in. It doesn't matter which God they pray to. It just matters that they have equal access to opportunity. If that doesn't boil in your blood and that doesn't surge in your veins, then you are not working towards unified consciousness. So the question again is, who am I? Look in the mirror and ask yourself, how do I, you, you look in the mirror and ask, how do I fight for those who cannot be seen, who cannot be heard, who are too long oppressed. If that's not our daily fight, then what are we doing? Just caring about our children? Just caring if we have a meal? Just caring about our bank balance? No. So to work toward unification means to make sure everyone is included, to make sure that everyone can climb on each other's backs, not just we are, we're climbing on one race's back or on the oppressed shoulders. We need to allow all of us to rise together. And if our life is not serving that mission, then we are living a self-absorbed mission. And that's okay. It's okay to be self-absorbed. But I hope, I hope that in today's climate, what has happened today in America has woken us up to start a different chant, to, to, to rally around the troops in a different way, to cry a different song, to speak a different language. We can no longer wait. We can no longer imagine that there's somebody coming to rescue us. We saw in this election that the race was too close for that side and for this side. What that means is that we need to stop the war. What that means not that we need to have a bigger war and a better battle. It means we, we're too close. Enough. We're like sisters and brothers fighting with each other. Exactly the same people in the same home fighting each other. One on that side of the fence, one on this side of the fence. So instead of fighting each other, we need to ask ourselves, where are we on this continuum of consciousness? And are we moving towards unified consciousness? That's the only question of the day. Are we moving towards unified consciousness? And when we ask that, when we see the arrow pointing in that direction, everything else begins to make sense. Then we stop our racism. We stop our complacency. We fight 
for those who cannot be seen. It's just an automatic thing that happens once you understand that the entire universe, our universe called Earth, needs to move towards unified consciousness. And we have to do it in our singular lives. Don't wait for the other side to change. Don't wait for the president to now carry the burden or Kamala to carry the burden. It's not their burden to bear. It's you and me every single day, every single moment, whenever we can, on every single platform we can. We have to spread the word. We have to shake the system. We have to put it in the face of those who are not able to see. So that's why I do what I do and I lose followers. They're not my followers. No one is a follower. Everyone can do what they want. They have every right to stop following people. I'd rather they not follow me and start their own page. It's time for us to, to think about where do I stand in my own life on a daily basis on this continuum of consciousness towards unification? How do I pledge my support? How do I advocate my, my, my time, my resources, and my energy? Where am I putting my body, my soul, my, my, my mind? Am I fighting the good fight towards unified consciousness? Let me not waste my time talking about people who are not fighting for this fight. Let me put more energy on those who are. And as this army, of, of soldiers marching towards unified consciousness grows, so will the continuum shift. The continuum shifts simply by each one of us marching the good fight. So yesterday, Biden never even talked about Trump. This is not about Trump anymore. Finished, finished. That was, that was what it was. We were abducted. We were under siege. It was a dark and disastrous moment my opinion. But now it's, it's our wake up call so that that never happens again. And how do we do that is by each one of us fighting the good fight. It's, it's standing up, standing out and carrying our brothers and sisters with us so that there, there is no longer an oppressed class. That is the first thing we need to end in this country, the divide between the white supremacists and the others in this country, in other countries, it could be something else, but identify what is the main fight and, and, and put your energy to fight it, but without antagonism, without divisiveness, without hatred. We can fight through nonviolence, through love, through energy, through power, through courage, through support, through brotherhood, sisterhood. That's how you fight the good fight. You don't fight it by killing other people. That's so stupid. Why would you waste your energy hating? We fight the good fight by increasing the army that goes towards unified consciousness. Mother Teresa said that she doesn't like to fight in the protests that are anti anything. She's like, put me in the pro fight. Let's increase the pro. Stop the anti. Don't put your energy in the anti fight. Put your energy in the pro fight. Side with those you want to, to grow. Don't spend your energy on those you hate. So on my page, if people are like hating me or disappointed with me, no energy. Doesn't matter. Good to hear you. Good to see you. Good. You're allowed to speak. Everyone can speak respectfully. You have a right to be disappointed in me. I'm so sorry I disappointed you. On my way. When you encounter somebody who is against you, the way to fight the good fight is to say, I hear you, I see you, I'm sorry I disappointed you, I get it, I release you, and move away. That's it. We don't, we don't flame those fires with, oh, really? Oh, yeah? I hate you, too. You know what? You're dumb as F, too. You're dumber than me. No, we don't do that, even though we want to do that. I know we want to do that, but I'm telling you that is not the good fight. And when you want to do that, lock yourself in a room. That's what I did for a couple of days. I was like, I need to, I need to put a kerchief over my mouth and bind my hands so they don't type nasty things. And I need to go into a corner because I am in toddler consciousness. Okay, I'm owning it. I have been big time in toddler consciousness. So sometimes the toddler left the room and came on on the camera. Oops. But for the most part, I have been in a corner when I am in toddler consciousness. 
when you are in power goddess consciousness speaking love and radiance come out of the corner so right now i am in that energy and i'm telling you do not fan the flames of toddler consciousness i hear you i see you i understand and i'm sorry i disappointed you we are on different points on the continuum of consciousness towards unification <laughs> if they're willing to hear all that then we're making progress, right? I always think to my, myself in my head, on a different point, on the continuum of consciousness towards unification, on a different point. People have a right to be at a different point, right? And in our toddler consciousness, AKA our ego, we want to punish them. But no, we cannot. We allow them to be where they're at and we keep moving towards unification. The more that keeps moving towards unification, so it's not about you versus me. It's about are we fighting for unification? Are we fighting for those who are not represented? People of color, black mothers, daughters, sisters, and brothers, and women. Pure and simple. Are we fighting for them? And when we do, we are fighting for consciousness, for unification. We're not fighting other people. We're not fighting against anybody. We're fighting for the ideology of unified consciousness. You know, people often have called me a fundamentalist because I'm fighting for unified consciousness. Yes, some things are worth being a fundamentalist for. Fighting for the oppressed, fighting for injustice, fighting for, for the people who are scourging and scouring the earth and burning it up. Yes, some fights are the good fight. Fight for unified consciousness. Don't fight people and don't fight their ideology. You go toward unified consciousness and every day pledge to make those who are unseen seen. Those who haven't had opportunity, now try to open the door. Speak for those whose voice has not been heard. Be it the earth, be it your black brothers, be it your people of color brothers, whoever has not been served a seat at the table. And for us women, for us women, and I know I'm talking to women right now, we need to stick together and rise collectively. We cannot fight with each other. Even if we don't agree, we say now, I hear you, I get you, I'm sorry, I don't think like you. We're at different points on the continuum of consciousness. So speaking about women, I have, I, my ego, my ego has a community of the most beautiful women. It's called Luminous. The doors are open now. I open the doors twice a year. It's run with between me and two of my dear friends and a community of a thousand. We are from all over the world. It's the price of membership is less than a manicure and a pedicure. It's just $25 a month if you want to be part of like-minded women who support each other, who hold each other together, who, who raise each other, then come join my community called Luminous, a community by women for women. The doors are open anywhere in the world. It's only open twice a year. And the way it works is that we have a thriving, throbbing Facebook page. And every Monday we have teachings by me and my sisters. And it's just, we support each other. We raise money for each other. We help each other with, with our parenting issues, with our relationship issues. We are there for each other. So if you want a community of women, join Luminous. Somebody please post the link on Instagram and Facebook. It's, in, um, it's on my website uh, under sessions, under Institute, under courses, somewhere. It's somewhere there. So join Luminous. Be part of a beautiful community. It is now time for us to work towards unity. Wherever you find it, let's work towards unified consciousness for all. Not unified consciousness for just those who think like me, look like me, and have as much money as me. It's now time for unified consciousness for all. So it's not the president's responsibility. It's not the Democrats' responsibility. It's not your leader's responsibility. It's your and my responsibility. We are the presidents of our own lives. 
So how are we moving our own cabinets and how are we, we encouraging our own troops within us and outside of us? So this is a new era. It's a new turn of the tide. It's so exciting. This is the wake up call like no other. So don't fight people. Stop fighting people. Go towards unified consciousness and let's all do it in our own way together. So thank you all for listening to me. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I will see you all when I see you all, perhaps next week. Join Luminous. I would love to see you all there. Somebody post the link um, on Instagram. I know it's being posted on Facebook, uh, but don't worry. We're going to post the Facebook links here and the whole talk of, of this viral wisdom again. Thank you all for joining me, guys. On the continuum of consciousness, we shall march forward. Bye, guys.